Good morning, good morning, good morning, my friends, my brothers and sisters, my family of God. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Listen, right off the top of this Morning Devo, I just have to make sure you know that I love you. This is not a a, a hate thing on you or anything or a hate thing on me. And I'm not going to add, I'm not going to apply pressure where pressure doesn't need to be applied, right? I'm going to just um, speak what the Lord has spoken to me since last night, since early, early last morning, just this morning, right? One or two in the morning, right? And he was giving me this word. And I was, because I was thinking, I said, man, why, why are so many of my brothers and sisters and why is there such a, a, a like a, an attraction to this world system, right? Well, why, why do I have to struggle uh, with the world system when I know that I have God? I don't need the world. I'm in the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of this world. The Bible says I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world anymore. Although I can't point fingers, and I'll, I'll tell you a little quick story um, after we you know, pray and share this out. Um, but last night, it was an eye-opener for me in a lot of ways. It was almost like God had me. I was doing some lift yesterday. You know, I like cash flow. I need cash flow. So I was doing some lift yesterday. That's ride share. And there was a young man that I picked up that reminded me of me when I was his age. And then he just started talking. Started telling me everything that he did on that this past weekend. I was like, wow. Um, I couldn't judge him. I couldn't point fingers at him because I think I was listening to me um, when I was in my 20s. I'm just going to leave it right there for now. So God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. I try to do these Mondays through Fridays, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the 10 o'clock hour, right? Sometimes I'm not prompt right on time. Other times I am like today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I w- I've been waking up without my alarm lately. Amen. I've been waking up at 4.35, 6 in the morning, um, just waking up and then um, wondering why God woke me up at that time. So I just start praying for my family. I start praying for my community here. I start praying for love that someone is with Z. Org, the community over there as well. Amen. And uh, I don't know why he's like waking me up so early. Um, maybe he's telling me to change my night owlness into the day. I don't know. Um, but did you give your life to Jesus? That's the question I need to ask you before we get into this. Um, because the year is almost ending, 2021 is almost out of here. So before 2022, if you can answer that question, I believe God will do a great work in your life. So that when when you start 2022, if we're still here, right? If the world doesn't, you know, cease to exist, if Jesus doesn't come back before 2022, then I think it will spark up a revolution in your life, right? A revival, personal revival in your own life. If you answer this question honestly. A lot of people are going to go to this question and be like, no, I didn't give my life to Jesus and I'm not going to. I'm not going to give my life to him. A lot of people will be in that in that way. Um, and others will look at this question, take it seriously and be like, let me just see. So a lot of people might be looking at this question and be like, um, did you give your life to, did I give my life to Jesus? And a lot of people might go automatically, well, I go to church. Um, there's a difference between people who go to church and people who are saved. Uh, churchgoers and Christians, born again believers, are different people. So let's answer this honestly, right? Um, I suggest you do it before this year is over, maybe today. Scan the QR code on the screen. If you're listening on the podcast, God bless you all, all my listeners on the podcast. I will send you a link if you need um, or if you want. I believe you need it, but if you want, um, that you give your life to Jesus, a free resource that I made specifically to answer those questions, to help you answer that question in your life once and for all, all right? So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, any prayer requests, hop over to live. That's so is with a Z dot org. If you're watching from um, my shadow band platforms, you could go to our platform from live. That's so is with a Z dot org, which is never going to be shadow banned. I'm not going to be banned. I'm not going to be censored. I'm not going to be limited. You will get the notifications. If you sign up over there, you get all my notifications of when I go live. You'll be on my email list and you'll just get much, much more than a notification, right? And I can show you some more love and send you some more hot sauce of the word of God over through email. Live that someone is with a Z dot org. That's going to be the platform I'm going to be really pushing um, from now until infinity, right? Until I'm, I'm done here in this world. But 
If you have any questions, comments, concerns on any platform that you're listening from or you're watching from, don't hesitate to reach out. If you can't figure out how to connect with me during my lives, it's okay. If you're watching on the replay, it's okay. You can always email me at DJ Samrock at soulwinnerswithaz.org. So let's pray. Take a minute to pray, and then we're going to take a minute to share this out with as many people as we can. Share this too in the time that we have together. We'll share for 60 seconds, and then when we come back, I'm going to start with 1 John, 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. I just want to start there and you know build on this. This is going to be a series because there's no way I'm going to get through all of this. There's a lot here. Um, so this will probably be a series, probably will last close to the end of this year. That's how much sauce is in here, right? So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for waking me up. Thank you for waking everyone up um, that's watching, that's connecting now, that's going to connect later. Father God, I pray that you will bless us as we bless your holy name. And yes, Lord, you are holy. Remind us of what holiness is all about, Lord Jesus. Remind us what this world is throwing our way, the unholy things. Let us see what's unholy and let us see what is holy. Let us see what is right. Let us see what is wrong. Let us see what's coming from your light and what's coming from the darkness. Oh God, I ask that you will help us in all our situations. We know, Lord Jesus, that you don't tempt us, but the devil and our own sinful, evil desires tempts us to do things that are not honoring to you. I ask, Lord God, that you fill us an overflow with the things that you have for us so that way we won't be bothered or enticed by this world um, as much as we are during our times. So, Father God, bless you in your holy name. I set forth Arkwin angels, minister angels, warring angels to every single viewer, every single listener right now, the sound of my voice in Jesus' name. I pray health to the body, strength to the bones, protection over us and our families in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord God, that you would show us what does it mean not to love this world and what does it mean that if we're struggling with this world, what does it truly mean? What's going on in our soul that you will reveal it to every single person, including myself, and you will snatch it, take it out of our lives so that way we can no longer come to try to control something that is not controllable because you, Lord God, are in control of all those who call upon your name, including me and my family. Lord God, we called upon your name to be saved, not to be thrown back into the fire of this world. I pray by faith in Jesus' name, peace be still, and know that you are God for every single person that's connecting or is going to watch on a replay or listen later. In Jesus' name, I praise by faith. Amen and amen. So let's get into it really quick, right? Live that someone is with a Z Z.org. Meet me over there. And... Well, I'm going to do all 60 seconds to share this out. I drew a blank real quick. 60 seconds to share this out. And let's go for it. Why not? Right? I'll be back in 60 seconds. We'll be in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. Get your Bible apps ready, your Bibles ready. And we're going to dive in there, right? And that'll be the starting point of this whole morning devo. I'll be right back. And there we go again, man. That that minute oof, was amazingly quick. So let's go to the first scripture here. Oop, turned off my iPad. Turned it off. Hold on, give me one second, ladies and gentlemen. And first John 2, 15 and 16 says, This is the word of God. Um, so I know this is gonna spark up some emotions, maybe some anger in some people's spirit and soul, but it's the word of God. The loving God, 
the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Same God that we're reading about right now. Same God in the Old Testament, the same God in the New Testament. Same God. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, that's everything in the world. Listen to this. This is the love of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride, pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. So we know as Christians, as believers, we're not immune to this. We have overcome because we are overcomers through Christ. But how many of us are going to be honest enough? You could be an apostle, pastor, teacher, prophet, evangelist. How many of us are willing to admit that we are still in a battle with the lust of the flesh? Or we're still trying to focus on Jesus, the author, finish of our faith, but we still struggle with the lust of the eyes? Or... We might try to stay humble and try to act like we're humble, but we're actually full of the pride of life. Look what I have. Look what I'm doing. Look at my platform, right? The pride of life. All those things, they don't come from God. So let me just tell you right now, God is not running this world system. Surprise. Why would God allow bad things to happen to good people in this world system? You see how that question walks off the cliff. Well, let's see who's the God of this world. Is God, the father, the creator of the universe and everything running the world system or he reigns over everything? It's a difference. The world system and the kingdom of God, two different systems, right? It's like me saying, see, I'm dark skin, right? It's like me saying, um, well, I'm Italian or I am European or I am white American. You're going to be like, um, no, you're not. How you know? Well, because I don't look white American. I look dark, black American, whatever you want to call it. I'm Latino. Some people call it Hispanic, whatever you want to call me. But you're going to know right away from the appearance, from my appearance, that I am not a white American or a European, you know, whatever. I'm just using me as, as an example, right? Because of my skin tone, Maybe the way I talk, maybe the way I walk, right? So in the same way, if we're not careful as believers, we might be looking at the world and thinking the light of the world or the appearance of the world is actually something that God has done or is doing or is allowing, right? Because every time, it maybe it's just me but or my imagination, every time something bad happens on the earth, people automatically say, why would God allow that? Um... Are we sure that God's allowing it or is it the enemy, the devil at work? The one that's ruling on this earth, ruling the world system. Now, I want to make sure I'm careful when, because we have John 3, 16, right? For God so loved the world. Well, in the Bible, the term world can refer to the earth. Right, the world, the earth. You saw the graphic earlier that I put on the screen, and you see the graphic on the podcast. I have these two hearts, they resemble two worlds. And I did that on purpose. Um, the red world would be the world system, and the blue world would be God's system the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this earth. So in the Bible, the word, the term world can refer to the earth. Right? Physical earth and physical universe. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. God is creator of the world, the earth. Okay? And of course, he created all things. He created human, mankind. John 13, 1 says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world, 
to the Father, out from this earth to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. So, sometimes when we see the word or the term world in the scriptures, we're not talking about the people. So, John 3, 16, so, so God so loved the world, God so loved the world that he gave the world. He's not talking about the earth. He's talking about the people, you see? So we have to be careful. When we read the scriptures, let's read it. If you have to do a word study, like you have to look at the word the word world and you look it up and have its biblical context and its meaning, right? That's, you know, what people call due diligence. You know, do study the word, study the Bible. Sometimes you have to study what the word means. So the world could mean, right, two things. The physical earth, where we're standing on, where we're breathing, where we're, we're where God planted us on, or then John three sixteen, the world, the people of the world. So it could have referred to that, to the humanistic system that is always at odds with God. Matthew eighteen seventeen, woe to the world! You see, woe to the world. That means curse to the world for temptations to sin. For it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. God said, listen, you're being tempted. Curse is the person who's tempting you. Curse is the person who's tempting me. If I tempt you to do something unholy, I'm cursed, right? So God is not the one that's tempting. Guess who's the one that's tempting? Where well, we already saw that we have a, a role to play in this, the lust of the flesh, how many Christians could say, I still, still struggle with the flesh? If you're saying that you got over your flesh and you're still alive on this earth, you are a flat liar. Now we have to deal with a lying, um, fleshly person. So then, you know, oh, I don't struggle with the flesh no more. You're lying. I don't care how many years you've been a Christian. I don't care how many Bible studies you've done. I don't care how many people follow you on Instagram, TikTok, uh, Facebook, you know, YouTube. You're a Christian. Uh, welcome to... Um, the battle of the flesh and the lust of it. I don't care. We all got to struggle with that. But God is not tempting us. He himself cannot be tempted, nor does he tempt us. The devil is what's tempting us. So the devil comes, makes the world look like, wow, look at all of this that's going on. Look at this. Like, he'll, oh, look at that. Look at this. Look at that. Look at her. Look at him. Wow, it's an amazing thing. And then you hear these voices when you're in church, um, instead of um, paying attention to what's going on and the whole wonders that's going on in the church building, um, because people are on fire for the Lord, the preachers are preaching, the pastors are pastoring, an evangelist is evangelizing, the prophet is prophesying, the apostle is serving, and you're like scrolling through your phone because you're unconnected, you're disconnected. It hurts when I see that. And if I'm not careful, I start, you know what I mean? You notice that if somebody's doing that during a service, like scrolling through, it's like a temptation for you to do the same thing, right? You're like, yeah, well, let's tune out too. And then I see everything. Because um, I, I, from my position, my, in my congregation. And also, I'm not only talking about my congregation. I'm talking about the church, capital C. People, other churches that I visited, um, there's people everywhere. If you haven't noticed that when you go to any worship, house of worship, any church, have you ever noticed that there's people in there like human beings? So we, every human being is going to struggle with something, right? But I, I fight, I literally fight to stay focused um, because I believe it's worth the fight. So when the Bible says that God loves the world, like in John 3.16, God so loved the world. It is referring to the human beings who live there or who live here. 1 John 4, 9 says, In this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son. He didn't create a son. He sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. So he's saying, I sent Jesus to mankind. God is the creator of the universe. It wouldn't make any sense for God to love 
send Jesus to save the planet, like the little planet Earth. No, Jesus was sent on a rescue mission to save me and you, the humans that live on the Earth. So now next time you hear the question, why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? We we'll say where you could ask where. Be respectful, please. This is not something um, to be like a wise guy about. Just ask the question where, and they're going to say here on this earth. And then the next question you could ask: Who's running this earth? And if they say God, take them to some scripture. God's not running this world system. Why would He run this world system the way it's being ran? Haven't you noticed a lot of pain, a lot of deceit, a lot of evil on um, politicians that are going buck wild, systems put in place that are taking our kids' imagination and putting it into a device, metaverse, all this stuff that's coming, people talking to the universe. What God would allow that to happen? You start thinking about it. Says that Jesus? No. Is that God the Father? No. Is that God the Son? No. Is that the Holy Spirit God? No. So if it's none of that, none of the triune God, the three and one, three persons, one God, um, then who is it? The devil. And then what does he know how to do? He's been doing this since the beginning, right? The Bible says he's been a liar. He's the father. He's been a liar. He's the father of liars. He's been like that since the beginning, a murderer since the beginning. So he knows how to run systems that make it so appealing. Like, have you ever looked and focused on something? When I was a kid, there was a picture in my in my living room when I lived in the projects, and it was a, a artful picture, but it, it was a picture of a half naked woman. And I used to look at it, focus on it, and say, "Wow, what is all that about?" I used to be innocent once before, and I used to imagine what what is that about? And then when my mom or my pops or my sister or my brother used to see me staring at that picture, they'd say, "Hey, stop staring at that picture." I'd be like, "Oh, so why is it on the wall?" Because it was put there because some people were drawn to it from the store and they took it to the to the house because they liked it and they put it up. The devil's been doing that to us forever. He'll put something on the wall of our lives or in front of our face and we're focusing on it. It could be anything, but it's not God putting it there. It's the devil put it there. So we have to get things straight. Let's speak one. Let's speak truth. God bless you, Brother Benny. It's good to see you, my man and my bro, my friend. I bless you, my friend, my brother. Amen. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So, for God so loved the world. So God loves the world, but we are not supposed to. <laughs> God loves the world. We're not supposed to. So that seems like a contradiction. It's not. If you know what the world he's talking about, he's talking about mankind. Let's go to the story real quick because I'm running out of time. Last night I was doing Lyft, right? I need cash flow in my life. So if something, I run online marketing businesses and all this other stuff, if something is falling, I'll go to something else um, to lift that up financially. That's the way I do it. That's the way I'm wired. So if I lose something here, I have to gain something somewhere else. If I'm not able to give um, to my local church because of something failing, I have to replace it with something else. That's the way. Anyway, so I'm doing Lyft. I'm in a, a different city. Um, real close from my home, but it's just a different city. And I pick up this young man. He gets in and, you know, right away, um, I could smell, you know, he's been smoking some weed. Um, and back in the day, we used to call it African Bombada. That's what it smelled like because it was, um, smelled like some good stuff um, that I don't promote for you to use. I'm just saying that's what it smelled like. Anyway, so he gets in and for whatever reason, man, Right away, he starts telling me his whole weekend. He says, man, I just came out of work. Um, I've been with this shorty for two days. Now I'm going back to wifey. Right? See that? And, um, you know, she's, you know, I know you saw her because she came out. She paid for the, the lift. She came out. He said, I know you saw her. She looks chopped up. That's a, a young person saying that she's not as good looking. And he was telling me this time and third. He told me what she was doing to him or what, you know, was going on. And I'm listening, I'm listening, and listening. I'm like, wow, this kid, this young man sounds like, I said, how old are you? He was 20-something years old. I'll just leave it like that. And I said, um, so wow. In my mind, I'm like, this kid sounds like me before I started following Jesus. So I'm listening, listening. And then right when he gave me the opening, 
I said, you know what? I understand everything you're talking about. And yeah, man, that's, 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 I understand where you're coming from. I understand what you're doing. But I said, I stopped that, I stopped that, that life over 20 years now. He says, what? And for whatever reason, he says, when I said I stopped that for over 20 years, stopped smoking, drinking, cheating on my wife and all, cause he was married to, he's going back to his wife and three kids. And, um, and he said, oh man, he said, God bless, blessing, God, God's blessing, God's blessing. I was like, hmm. is there a connection between disconnecting from all the world things, right? That what we used to do, what I used to do, and God, he automatically said, oh man, that's a blessing. God bless, God bless. That's, you know, good for you, God bless. I was like, there's something there. Because I said, I, I, he even asked me how I stopped doing everything like that over 20 years. He just knew automatically I had to do something with God. So when you notice that you're being enticed, it could be, I'm telling you, it could be, it could be music, it could be TV, it could be movies, it could be, of course, a guy or a girl, it could be money, it could be social media status, social media fame, it could be pride, the lust of the eyes, right? It could be temptations of this world, wherever it is, is God really doing that to you? So next time somebody asks you, how would a good God allow evil? You have to ask the question, would he allow evil where? And, it's, and if they say, on this earth, where else? I say, well, who's running the world? And if they say God, take them to the scriptures. God, and I'm going to stand on this. And I can back it up with scripture. God's not running this world system. Because if he was, right? It would be a bright day, be a good day right now in the whole entire planet, in the whole world. But he's going to rule and reign a thousand years, right? And we're going to find out the difference between how this world was being run by the devil and how this world system could be run by the Lord Jesus. So we're not there yet, obviously. Like, I don't know why people are so confused. So why are we so drawn to the things of this world? And we have Jesus, right? We're supposed to be good. We have Jesus. We have. I think it's because we're not filling ourselves up enough with the good things of God. I think we're enticed by the world so much that we start looking to the left. It's probably looking to the right on the screen, right? And looking to the right. So let's do this again. Looking to the left, looking to the right. And I think that's right. I don't know. It's weird. And um, I think we're focusing on the wrong things. The Bible says, focus on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now, in any situation, this is definitely going to be a series. I don't have enough time. I have a lot of things to say. And I know it's going to help me. It's going to help you. I know it's going to bless somebody. But listen, if I'm focusing on the wrong thing for too long, it's going to be hard for me to unfocus off that thing. See, I'm this type of person. Whatever I focus on, if I say I'm going to do something, I start imagining me doing it already. And if I'm not careful and this thing in my mind starts going a different way, I could be like, listen, um, yeah, I'm focusing on the wrong thing. And if I'm not careful, I'm going to start doing the wrong thing because I'm already imagining me, imagining me doing the wrong thing. So I think as brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to be honest with one another. Um, this man that's armed with us now, Brother Benny, I confessed um, so many things to him, amen, that I was going through man to man. Uh, I was disappointed with some things I had to share with him because I'm like, why am I, why am I sharing this with this brother? He, you know, I'm supposed to be past this already. But I don't think none of us are past anything. Once I say, oh, I got this, that's when the fall is going to come. Once I get prideful and I lose being humble, I'm going to fall. So I went to a brother that I could trust, Brother Benny, and spoke some things, let him hear some things, let him hear me out. And he did listen, and he came with the word. Not his opinion, came with the word, and also came with prayer, and also he, he wake me up. And the same with him. If we need each other. And that way, we're going you know, to go for it. And we both were raised in a church, so we know what we're talking about, right? So I have four minutes. Let's go. So when the Bible says that God loves the world, it's referring to the human beings who live here. And as his children, because, listen, this whole thing, oh, we all are God's children. No, we're not all God's children. No, we're not. Jesus Christ is the only one who gives us the right to be called sons and daughters of God. I don't care what you say. If you want to say, oh, we're all God's children. No, we're created an image of God, but that doesn't mean we're all God's children. You know, we have to start reading the scriptures again. I don't know. I don't know. Like, 
I'm a Christian DJ and I hardly get any invites to do Christian parties anymore. Why? Because they said I play too much Christian music. Does that make any sense? It does make sense. It's starting to make sense to me now because we want both. We want to eat off the plate of this world. We want to eat off the plate of the Lord. It doesn't work that way. You hire me, it's going to be family-friendly music. Yes, I, I'm forced to play secular music, oldies, classics, those line dances that I can't stand, Cupid Shuffle, this, that, and the third. I'm like, man, people still like that music, but yes, they still do it, so I have to play it. But don't, don't think that I'm not mindful of who's hiring me and what they're hiring me for. Amen? No twerking, no turn-up parties, no, not this way. Um, and yeah, I could get a lot more money by doing those type of parties. I remember a couple of years back, they offered me like $1,500 to do this big festival, four-hour festival. There's going to be thousands of people there. All I had to do is bring my little setup. The sound system was already there. And they said, well, are you coming? I said, what kind of music? They were like, twerk, you know, turn up music. You know, I was like, no, I ain't doing it. They turn this down? Yes. Um, it won't make no sense for me. And it actually will get me um, loving the things of the world again, right? Uh, we're not past these things to the coming of Christ. Amen. So we're all in the struggle. We're all in the fight together. But it's a good fight. A good fight of faith, man. It's a good fight. And it's, a worth, it's worth the fight. Amen. For our families, for our very own selves. So, his children. And as his children, we ought to love other people. Romans 13, 8. I'm going to end it here because we ran out of time. Romans 13, 8. The Bible says, owe no one anything. So, I don't owe you nothing, man. Except, I owe you this, to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Now, I don't owe you jack. But as a Christian, I said, wait, I do owe you something. I owe you my love. Amen. For God so loved the world, the people in it, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, shall not die, but have eternal life. I'm telling you, man, I can't make this up. God was shaking me with this the other day because I'm trying to remain unjudgmental. Oh, you can't judge. You can't judge them. You can't. Yeah. And he's and he's teaching me that. He's showing me that. Yeah, I can't judge the outsiders because the Bible says I was just like that young man that sat in my car in my back seat. Coming from his, well, what we call as Spanish people, his Chia's house, his side piece house, his side girl. Uh, I couldn't say, oh, man, you shouldn't do that. You know, blah, blah, blah. All I said, let me, let me listen. And hopefully, and I was praying. I hope, God, give me an opening. Give me an opening. He gave me an opening to say, I used to be that way. And I understand completely what you're doing. Right? I used to do the same thing. But I stopped. Over 20 years, I haven't done that. I said, I haven't cheated on my wife. I haven't smoked weed. I haven't drank alcohol, I haven't got, um, you know, lit, I haven't partied, um, you know, but I understand completely where you're coming from. I said, I used to be doing the same thing. And I think because of that, because I said, listen, um, I'm not going to judge you, but it's not a good thing. But I used to do that, but I stopped. He automatically, I didn't even have to bring up God. He said, man, that's, that's a blessing. God bless, God blessing you. God's blessing you. How did he know that? How did he know that disengaging from the world meant that I was engaging with God? Think about that real good. So we're going to continue this. What does it mean that we are not to love the world? Are you in love with the world? Do you love the world more than you love the, the God of this world? Let's think about it, man. God's not running this world system, but God is supreme. He's, he is the reigner and ruler of this universe. And he loves us because he gave his very best so we can have the very best. So God bless you all. God keep you all. Remember always that God is good. And um, yeah, till the next time, we'll get back together. Peace.